Okay. Want to do a quick code review of uh, the vector uh, DSPs that are going on. Uh, so I have a ring buffer and uh, got some indexes. I have some buffers to hold the data and the FFT data. Some textures which I paint the waterfall on these pixels. So I paint these pixels onto a texture and then put the texture onto the canvas. Uh, so let's get into it. So initialize the audio. It's probably stuff you're already familiar with. You get the device, get the default end device, set up your callbacks. Um, so this part where you get the description, I want to match the sample rates, otherwise you get an error. So that's why I'm doing the I'm getting the basic description from the input side and the output side. And then I'm making sure that they match each other so there's no error there. Uh, get the sample count so I know how many samples are in the buffer. Uh, allocate my buffer, my buffer list for the callback later. Uh, just store the sample count. Uh, allocate data for my buffers. Set up the buffer and uh, start the audio. And so here's the input callback uh, standard. You probably know about this audio unit render. I want to render it to my buffer list. And within this, within the buffer list, I'm, I'm just interested in one, one channel. Uh, so I just get one side of that. Uh, so I'm copying each buffer into my ring buffer, which I'm going to use later. I'm incrementing my index and based on the modulus, if it's zero, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy that into the result and set the display and tell the display it needs to be reset. Uh, so let's get to the draw data. Draw data. So my texture it has to be a power of two, so I chose 512 by 512, and four is the um, RGBA values. Four bytes are red, green, blue, and the alpha channel. Uh, so lazy initialization for image data. If it doesn't, if it's not there, then go ahead and allocate it and clear it out start clearing it out makes it black to begin with uh, and so this this loop actually is where the waterfall is created it takes the last so when I paint one row of pixels it takes those and makes a history of them so the history of the pixels is what you see kind of falling down the screen uh, mem set probably this probably not needed actually but I cleared out anyway uh, set up some variables for the FFT Standard stuff you're probably familiar with, the complex, the FFT setup. Um, use a hand window, there are different windows, I just chose hand. Uh, allocate the memory from my real and my imaginary parts on my Fourier transform. Uh, then I go ahead and multiply my result into my window and put that into the F FFT data buffer. Uh, I do the step by FFT buff count because, you know, this is this is more data than this so that makes sense uh, uh, send the FFT data to my complex yeah all this is standard you probably know about that uh, so I, I, I transform this to decibels you can look at the VB, VDB con method or function and, and review that so that's why I just want to convert my amplitude information into decibel for, uh, format so uh, I want to multiply this by 0.0 just to make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up the whole screen. There's no real reason for that. I want to make my FFT data, FFT2 data, I want to make that absolute. So, so the blue, the blue, uh, light blue is the real and the green would be the absolute value. I win. So another lazy initialization for the textures. If uh, it doesn't exist, let me create it. Uh, okay, so now I set up my textures, and this is where I run through the texture image. And for this row, for so I have 0 to 512, that's my size. I want to multiply my red, green, and blue values by my the absolute value, which is created up here, of my FFT uh, data buffer, and then apply that. To, so that's what you get kind of more of a blue, blue color up here. So I have Okay, so that's it. Uh, pretty simple. So this is the text coordinates where we actually pay, paint the texture. If, if this one, the one that's commented out, if you use this one, it'll flow upwards. 
it look like it's going upwards. If you use this one, it makes it look like it's flowing downwards. Uh, so this is where I plot the frequency. Uh, this is for the blue frequency. So basically, uh, the coordinates are negative one to one, and negative one to one. So I have two steps from negative one to one is the value of two. So that's where this two comes in. So I'm setting up a step of two divided by the number of samples that I have, and I'm starting at negative one. So then down here you see where I do the step. And so I'm plotting, you know, my x for x. I'm doing uh, my FFT2 data. And same thing for the absolute value. This is the green one. So it's the same thing basically except I'm using the, the other data buffer. And this is the original wave, the, the gray wave you see that shows your real signal that's happening. Um, and so it plots that the same way, just uh, uses the original data to, to plot the, the signal. And so that's it. If you have any questions, send me an email. Other than that, uh, call it good. Thanks, bye.